Have you just signed up for your first marathon? Or were you lucky enough to get a place in the London Marathon? Well, in this video, I'm gonna tell you about how to train and accomplish your goals. So let's get stuck in. Right guys, so welcome back to 40 Runs. Now, if this is your first time at 40 Runs, make sure you smash that pink button down there that says subscribe on it. Go to our Facebook page and join the 40 Runs running community, especially if you are training for this marathon. And don't forget to check out the links below. There's loads of cool stuff in the description that will help you out as you train for your marathon. Right, so you're a bit crazy, you're a bit nuts, and you've signed up for your first marathon. Well, don't panic, because I say in this video, we're gonna talk about how you can even go from the couch to a marathon. So let's get stuck in. Right guys, so first up, we're gonna talk about the guys who are, let's say, new to running, who have signed up for their marathon. Um, we're gonna get onto you 10Kers and you half marathoners who are gonna be going up to the uh, marathon distance. Um, but yeah, so first off, we're gonna talk about the guys who are, are new to running, who have got a place in the marathon or sign up for a marathon because they wanna run for charity or as a personal goal. The best thing I could say is to get yourself a Couch to 5K program. Uh, join maybe a local um, council run, program sometimes they're free um or you know a local uh, running club uh that do the programs or whether there's like a pt in the area or uh, you know something like that where you can we can get along and start uh, start on your couch a 5k journey and they're very very simple uh, and they're great and they're very um motivational and usually they start off with a, a run walk program you know and this is what i do for the guys as well is to is to start you off with like a i know a one minute walk two minute and uh, one minute jog two minute walk and slowly build up slowly build up and you know do that for a period of time uh, it's more time on your feet than distance to start with um and then after a few weeks we kind of work out um a plan of getting to a certain distance um when i started running um i actually used my uh, mother-in-law's house uh, as a uh, sort of place I wanted to run to um, and this is a good tip try and pick yourself somewhere where you can run that you that you've got like a goal to run to um, I picked there because I knew I if I had any troubles I got nervous I got anxious that I would you know be at a familiar place and they could come and pick me up if I was in trouble and all that kind of stuff and it really helped psychologically um, you can also go somewhere, leave your car and maybe, uh, you know, run back to it or, or you can get off a train and run home uh, or run walk home even. Stuff like that where you're, where you're running to a place really helps you mentally dealing with those demons when you're first starting out running. Um, and it's like it gives you that safety net uh, that can cure some of that anxiety. Oh no, I've got to do my first two and a half K. Uh, and, but if you're going somewhere that, that is comfortable, it can be a real help. Um, and then once you've sort of hit that two, two and a half K, whatever it is, whatever the goal you've set yourself, which is uh, that sort of distance is a good one to recommend to, to be your sort of first run. Uh, and then you just kind of build on for that distance. So, you know, you run to, let, let's say like I did, I ran to my mother-in-law's and then I would then run, walk home. So then that would be my 5K in total. Uh, and that kind of stuff. And what I was just doing was building week by week onto my distance nice and slowly nice and surely i wasn't going mad i was trying to avoid injuries because running too much too soon will get you injured um we tend to do it and we tend to go out and run too far as well and too frequently so just take it easy run do it a couple of times a week i say joining a, a, a local um sort of couch to 5k program is great if you're like me and you don't have time and you know you're part of let's say something like the 40 runs running club which is affiliated but with virtual because um a lot of people don't have time to go to running clubs or they you, you don't have the confidence you can still do these things you can still get yourself a plan online and you can do it and you can build yourself up but yeah that's my top tip for getting started just start nice and slow start nice and easy and just slowly but surely build yourself up to that 5k Right, so you've done your couch to 5k. Um, hopefully you've now uh, gone and smashed a park run, which is a great way to celebrate uh, getting to that 5k. Taking yourself along to your local park run um, and taking part in a park run is a wicked way of celebrating getting from a couch to 5k and I can really recommend it. It's free, it's awesome. Just go over to park run, um, Google park run and you'll find your nearest one. Um, but that's a cool way of doing it. And, and But once you've hit that 5k uh, sort of uh, milestone, to go to that 10k uh, distance is, is quite a simple evolutionary process. The first thing I would recommend you do is book a 10k event. 
look locally for a, a, a 10k event not particularly a big one um you know they're great the big events that go on in london and, and other places up and down the country you know in the big cities and the big towns but maybe look something like a local event uh and book yourself onto something like that because uh, it'll be your first time running a, uh, an organized event but running a 10k is a good way firstly of motivating yourself so you've got something booked in the diary so you can then build up to that 10k distance but also get you familiar with what happens on race day and what happens uh, when you will eventually get to your marathon what will actually happen on the day it gets you familiar with using the toilets it gets you familiar with getting your race number through the post or picking it up on race day and all those kind of things so definitely book a 10k now to get from 5k to 10k like i said it's quite an evolution of what you've been doing um and it just you just expand um on your couch to 5k but what you're going to be starting to do is putting in what they call a long run um so one of your let's say two or three runs that you're doing a week hopefully you're probably up to about two uh, up to about three runs this week uh, in the week is it's going to be a long run and what you need to do that long run so carry on doing your you know your walk run routine or whatever you're doing in the week another weekend or one day in the week that suits you try and put some time aside to go out and go from that 5k to that 10k now there is a rule as we go on it's called the 10% rule which is adding 10% mileage on per week um if you're going from 5 to 10, it, you don't need to rigorously stick to it. You, you should run to how you feel, uh, especially if you're doing work in the gym and that kind of stuff. You may feel stronger and you may feel fitter. Um, so see how you feel, but the, the point is don't do too much again. Like I said uh, in Couch to 5, don't go and do too much too soon because you'll just get injured. Uh, and that's a, this is a sort of real worrying time when you're going from 5 to 10, how you can start picking up injuries because you're running too fast or you're running uh, too much. But yeah, you need to take what you've been doing and then put in a long run and extend that long run. So let's say one week you're doing your 5K, so regularly you're doing the 5K, let's say it's a park run on a Saturday, and then maybe on, on a Tuesday you then start edging out from 5K, you go five and a half, six, six and a half, seven, seven and a half, and slowly but surely you'll get up to that distance. And it'll come quite quickly and it'll come actually come quite easily for you because you've, you've done the groundwork and you're couched to 5k so to go to 10k is relatively easy for you in that way relatively easy it's still gonna be hard work but it it's not gonna become unnatural because you've already put the foundations in you've already got that training routine you've already started to think right um, you know I feel like this or this part of the time of the day so I feel better to run in the morning or I feel better to run in the evening and you know roughly where you can fit it in in your life you start looking at your nutrition you start thinking about other things and all that kind of stuff all comes into one and to go from 5k to 10k is relatively simple and especially having that goal of smashing that run further in the distance you'll find yourself very very motivated to do it Right, so going from 10K to half marathon, now this is where we start getting properly, properly serious. Um, and we kind of carry on with what we've been doing previously, but we also have to take care of some other stuff. Now, I would recommend if you're marathon training, signing up for a few half marathons. Um, again, it's familiarity with big events, it's familiar, familiarity um, with training blocks, it's familiarity with fueling, and all these kind of things that you're gonna to have to come across when you're marathon training will start to come into play when you're half marathon training. So I say, book a, book a half marathon, um, give yourself you know, 12 weeks, get yourself a half marathon plan. Uh, there's loads online. Uh, I've even got my old one up on 40runs.com. Um, and you wanna be running you know, three times a week, something like that. Um, and you wanna be, like I said before, you wanna have your long run in. Um, and in those other two runs, we're going to start adding in things like, you know, heels, tempo runs, speed runs, that kind of stuff to improve our stamina and improve our overall strength. Um, ideally, you need to be doing some sort of cross training if you can fit it in, whether it be going to the swimming pool, whether it be getting on a bike, you know, a bit of gym work, improving your core, all that sort of stuff will make a difference to that half marathon that you're going to achieve. Um, but yeah, you want like a 12 week plan. I've done videos on training for your first half marathon, check them out. Uh, I say my half marathon plan is still up. But this is where you start needing to think about that 10% rule. So increasing your distance roughly 10% every week through that 12 week plan, plan as you train for that half marathon. 
concentrating on other elements like as i say like those bit of speed work bit of heels that kind of stuff cross training start thinking about what you're eating uh, are you eating healthy enough are you getting the right things into your diet you know you're going to be using up a lot of uh, a lot more carbs um, you're going to need some protein to help your muscles um, you need to be make sure you're hydrating in particularly before and after an event um, or after a long run sorry you're also going to have to start thinking about fueling in your half marathon so whether it be the dreaded gels or whether you're looking for a natural uh, alternative to using fuel because during your half marathon you will burn uh, more than what you're putting in so if you don't fuel up after about 45 minutes to 60 minutes you'll you'll basically you'll empty your tank so you need to be refueling through your for your half marathon and this is all good training for when you get to that marathon so half marathon going from 10k to half marathon distance get yourself booked in on a 12 week plan roughly get them online start putting in some real real good uh, runs in the week whether it be hill training speed training whatever start thinking about cross training working on that core start thinking about your diet you know like i said getting the good stuff start thinking about and sampling and playing around with fueling what works for you whether it be before during and after how that all that kind of stuff but most importantly when you're half marathon training is to say work on that 10 percent rule in your long run and get yourself up to about 11 miles 12 miles you can do the distance if you want to but if it's your first half marathon go to about 11 and 12 miles is my recommendation because then when you get there you know week 12 you'll smash through the 30 miles no problem at all um, and again don't be going there chasing times don't be thinking i'm going to go and smash this pace yourself correctly you'll be just fine get in the middle and then move on to marathon training right so going from a half marathon to a marathon distance is actually relatively pretty simple because you've trained for a half marathon, you know what it feels like to be in a training plan. Um, you know what it's like to fuel a run. You know what it's like to go out and do a long run and deal with those mid-run blues, to have a bad training run, to have a good training run, to do speed sessions, to do heels, um, to add things into your diet, to, to hydrate, and all these kind of stuff. You've done a few half marathons, so you know what it's like to turn up to an event and what's involved with that, getting your number, going early and having all the anxiety and all the mixed feelings, um, all that kind of stuff. You've had all that. So actually going from a half marathon to a marathon, people say, oh, I can't do it. It's too... Actually, you can do it because it is relatively simple and it's a, it's a straightforward process. The difficulty comes with marathon training is, is really is the mind. Uh, the body is an amazing thing. It is a amazing, amazing thing. And it can do awesome things. And if you put the working in your training, you will finish that and smash that marathon, right? The thing is with the marathon is the brain. And marathon training, a lot of it is about training your brain. In a 17, 16, 17 week plan, when you get into the later parts of the marathon training is where you have to deal with the mental aspects. And there's many mental tips out there that work for different people. I think I've even done a video on it. Um, but you really need to conquer that. And that's why doing that sort of longer distances later in your, in your plan, you will develop ways to deal with the, the mid-run blues, to deal with the, I can't do it, my legs are hurting, my knees hurting, all those thoughts in your head. You, you will overcome those in your training uh, and you will find a way of coping with it. And that's what the difference probably is with regards to half marathon training and marathon training is when you start hitting those bigger distances later on in your training. So marathon training, get yourself yourself get yourself a plan. Loads online, don't pay for one. My old one's still up on 40runs.com. You're welcome to have it. Um, you want to be running three times a week if it's your first one. Um, you can run four times, five times a week, whatever you want, but three times a week's fine. Like your half marathon training, couple of speed you know speed session uh, you know a couple of tempo runs whatever you want to chuck in there heels you're cross training still from your half marathon so you're working on your core you're doing a bit of swimming all that kind of stuff you're hitting the gym you're also leading uh, a, a relatively healthy lifestyle because you're having to give yourself uh, the food that your body needs um, to, to maintain this sort of training you're doing so you've upped your carbs where you need them you've upped your protein where you need them you're hydrating properly all that sort of stuff you've got your fueling strategy sorted out you know what works for you in a half marathon so all you kind of need to do is extend that over to a marathon distance as you train for your marathon 
you say you'll start off like a half marathon training plan but what will happen towards the end you'll be um, going up in your distance and you need to think of marathon training like you're climbing a mountain you're doing a nice slow climb to get to that top where you're going to peak and that peak is basically the top of your training and and that mat sort of marathon uh date so whether it be london marathon so whether it be in april whether it be uh, i don't know whenever october but you need to think of it as a long slow climb up to the top and when you're going to peak for that marathon day and you need to say you just need to start off slowly uh, you've heard the expression probably a million times it's a marathon not a sprint and so over the sort of 17 weeks, you're just going to slowly but surely increase your distances. Again, like half marathon training, you're going to be doing like a 10% rule. Um, so if you look at my marathon training plan, um, I basically go, you know, like 20K, 22K, 25K, 27K, 28K. I may have then a down week and then I go to 30K and then I hit sort of 20 miles. And that's how I do it. And in between that, obviously, I'm doing my you know usual runs in the week, and I'm doing all the other stuff uh, if I can be bothered. But because uh, I'm useless at going to the gym, um, but I would really recommend you try and put some uh, cross training in. But yeah, so I get to that point, and then I peak, and I do my marathon, and then uh, I, then I come down after that, and then I go into whatever I do next. So yeah, if you're if you're going from sort of couch to marathon, hopefully this video has shown you that it's quite a steady and and relatively simple process that everybody can achieve it doesn't matter whether you're sitting on a couch watching this now thinking i'd love to do a marathon or oh dear i've been given a london marathon spot now what am i going to do whatever you are wherever you are in your running hopefully this video has proved to you that with a correct plan with correct structure and with the right mindset you can 100 percent achieve it So there you go guys, that's it. Couch to marathon. You're gonna smash it. Whatever happens, you will get the same medal as everybody else. Don't worry about finishing. Don't worry about how fast you're gonna do it. Don't worry about that left knee that's giving you jip. Don't worry about whatever you're worrying about. You're gonna smash this marathon and this marathon training. The most important thing is to stay positive throughout the whole process. Focus on what you can control. Focus on the present. Don't worry about the marathon that's, you know, 17 weeks away. Focus on the present. Focus on the next run you're going to be doing or focus on the next bit of training you're going to be doing and you'll be just fine. But that's it from me, guys. Don't forget to subscribe before you leave me today. Check out, say, check out the description. I'll put the link up to uh, my training plans. You're more than welcome to have them. They're my own. I'm not a PT or anything like that. Um, you can check them out. That's what I've used. I'll put them up there just if people want to have a look at them. But yeah, that's it, guys. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll catch you guys later.